This is the tale of Boonesboro and how it all began. When Daniel Boone first led his people across the Cumberland, though he had no wife and children that he could call his own, they were all his children to lead safe to their new home. There are shadows in the forest, danger hides behind every tree. But a man with a dream can find the way, follow him and you will be free. Oh, a man with a dream can find the way, follow him and you will be free. country, isn't it? Well, you ain't seen nothing I hear tell, Rebecca, till you set your eyes on the valley of the Cane Tuck. Shawnee territory, aren't we? Now, where'd you hear that, ma'am? Well, there are such things as books, Mr. Boone. Yeah, I've heard. There's no need for you to worry about it. Oh, I'm not worried. It's written that the Shawnees are very friendly with the settlers. It is? Well, that's what the book said. Well, now, I reckon the Shawnees haven't been reading the same book. I'm going to scout on up ahead. Hope you're enjoying your trip, ma'am. Fine-looking figure of a man, ain't he? Well, his manners could do with some improving. Honey, it ain't manners that make a man a likely husband. If I was a few years younger, I'd have him harness myself.
you for the last time. I didn't steal those first. That's right, mister. You're telling us for the last time. Turn him around. Turn him loose. Stay away from those guns. Odds are three to one against you. You think you ought to be giving orders? Well, the odds are going to be two to one if you don't do what I tell you. Now, get on your horses and get out of here. You can just as well have kept them. I didn't have a bill of sale for him. I uh, bought those furs. I want them off a trader. Some people just can't stand to lose. I'm a gambler. That make a difference? Nope. Why'd you step in? Well, sometimes I like to gamble a little myself. Which way are you heading? West. Taking some folks out to Kentucky. It's a long way to travel. And the land's worth it once you get there. Not for me. We got a little camp over there about a mile. Welcome to stop by if you want to. I might drop by for a plate of beans. I, I didn't get your name. Boone. Daniel Boone. Yeah, I've heard of you. My name's Santee, Jim Santee. As I recall, you've got somewhat of a reputation yourself. Like I said, I keep winning. You can hit your horse over there. I guess. With that and a pair of mules for a dowry, you, you could get lucky. Oh, no, thank you. You late getting back. The biscuits might have burned. I see you trapped something. Marcia, I'd like you to know Jim Santee. Charming lady in this wilderness. Either your eyes are failing or you're a liar. <laughs> Marcia, you got enough food for both of us? Uh -huh. Who's the pretty girl over there? She the old man's daughter? Nope. Her name's Rebecca Bryan. She's an Irish immigrant. She's bonded to him. You're a girl? Nope. Now that seems a shame, doesn't it? And it'd be mighty unfriendly to ignore. Ma'am, I've got a friend here who wants to meet you. Rebecca Bryan, this is Jim Santee. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Santee? Rebecca, Becky Bryan. That's a pretty name. Thank you. Daniel? Oh, uh, this is Cincinnatus. Howdy. Howdy. Are you planning to join our party, Mr. Santee? The name's Jim. And it so happens I just now made up my mind. Rebecca! Oh, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> Becky! Kill those fires! Douse the candles in the wagons! <laughs> Leave her alone. I'll take care of her. Help me get her to the wagon. Evan, you and Clint check the horses. That's probably what they're after. Thank you. 
they scattered in those trees. How many of them? I'd say five or six. If there were many more, they'd have moved right in. You going back to wagon train, those folks don't know much about Indian fighting. You're gonna have enough trouble without having them shooting at me, too. I'm going with you. You get yourself scalped real easy doing that. Let's go. How good are you with that thing? I'll get by. I'll go on ahead and call one up for you. I'll go ahead and call one in for you. Three left. shoot very far, but uh, they'll do a real good job up close. That's not it. Jolt that wagon too much, that girl still got that air in her shoulder. I didn't think you cared, but if it's any comfort, she's riding in my wagon. Now, you got all you can handle just driving your own oxen. Are you saying you're a better man than I am? No, you... Are you? Well, no, but... Then get. That she creature riles me. How far is it to Clinch Station? Oh, I reckon we'll be there by sundown. Expect to find a doctor there, huh? Yeah, we better. Yeah. Mr. Boone. Just checking the lashings. Sorry to rouse you, ma'am. Wait, you didn't. And the name's Rebecca, in case you've forgotten. I'll try to remember. It was just plain silly me getting in the way of that arrow. Well, I reckon you didn't read that part of the book that told you how to dodge them. I reckon I didn't. I trust you're not stopping at Clint Station on my account. We had to stop and get some supplies anyway, ma'am. I know that hurts you, ma'am. No more than it would hurt you if you tried calling me by my name.
This is the tale of Boonesboro and how it all began. When Daniel Boone first led his people across the Cumberland, though he had no wife and children that he could call his own, they were all his children to lead safe to their new home. There are shadows in the forest, danger hides behind every tree. But a man with a dream can find a way. Follow him and you will be free. Oh, a man with a dream can find the way. Follow him and you will be free. Wagon train's coming in. Good. Things have been dead around here. Go out and get them. Get them in here. We'll buy them a drink. Welcome to Clinch Station. Go on in, have a drink. Name's Doyle, Cash Doyle. I own the trading company here. I reckon you're the man I want to see. I'm Donald Boone. This is Jim Santee. Howdy. Well, we're real happy to see you. Uh, we're real happy to be here. Well, where are you heading? Kentucky. Oh, over the gap. Is there a doctor here in town? Yeah, Doc Meter. He's got a little house across the street. If it's not there, his wife knows where he is. Where's the best place to make camp? You can leave your wagons right where they are. No one will bother them. You can feed and water your stock at the edge of town. There's a doctor here, Martha. Thank heavens for that. I've got to check on the supplies. You go ahead. We'll take care of Becky. Sit down, Mr. Boone. Get us a couple of drinks, Luther. Here are the supplies we'll be needing. Yeah, that ought to see you through. I figured it will. Are there any other questions? Just one. When can we expect to get delivery? When you want it. Before the first snow? If we don't get it, a lot of folks will starve through the winter. I'll guarantee you delivery by September 1st. Now, if you don't mind waiting, I'll check and see how much of this we have in stock, and we'll figure up the bill. Town. I know the likes of it. Taverns and gaming. Yeah. Well, there it is. Should make quite a souvenir. Will she be all right, Mrs. Meter? She's asleep right now. My husband says, considering the circumstances, she'll be fine. Will she be able to travel? How soon? Oh, within a day or two. We have to get along to Kentucky and start building before the winter comes. Well, I hardly think she's up to a trip like that. Oh, she's just got to be. There's always danger of infection. She'd be dead before you got her out of the Cumberland. Oh, she's a bonded woman, and she ain't got no one to tie on to, maybe except him. You? It's mean enough comfort, but it's something. You sound as though you were bonded once yourself. A woman's got to have a man around to be caring. Otherwise, she's apt to sour. It doesn't seem to me you turned out sour. I had the right man once, till he got in the way of one of these. Can Rebecca stay here till she's feeling better? She's welcome to. 
You have nothing to worry about then, Martha. Me and the doc's wife are going to look after her. Nine hundred, forty dollars. Made yourself a deal. There you are. And if you step in the other room, Mr. Boone, I'll be more than glad to buy the drinks. The sovereign says you can't tell where the bean is. That's an old Indian moccasin game. That it is, friend. Taught to me by an old medicine man. Sovereign, you say? The king's own money. Cut yourself a bet. You won't be that lucky next time. Double the bet. I keep thinking I've seen you someplace before. A lot of people have seen me before. Now step aside and let this good man enjoy the game. There was a shooting scrape in Baltimore a year or so ago over a woman. You're mistaken, friend. And a married woman, if I remember right. And I say your memory's rotten. Let it go, Jim. Have a drink with us. I'm willing. I say you're a liar and a cheat. You'd have a hard time proving that, friend. Even if I find your yellow thieving hide under that shell? You're betting an insult, mister. Take it. Make it interesting, Luther. 50 beaver skins. You backing them? Yeah. When they talk big, they got to play big. That the one? Looks like you won your bet. That was one I couldn't very well afford to lose. Did I say I was worried? I know how you feel. Do you? When I won't even know myself until I get that whip across that team of oxen. I've a good man to lash into you myself. He'll be back for you. Who? Daniel. You mean for the supplies? I don't mean any more to him than a sack of flour. You keep on saying that, you'll end up a gaming with her. Good luck, Dan. You sure you want to stay? Well, Doyle's offered me a job running his games. Now that Luther's resigned. I'll just make sure you don't quit the same way he did. So long, Jim. Bigger he's staying on because of Becky? Well, I figure he just don't cause the farm. Is that what you figure? to see but when you have to cross them it is pain and misery for the rocks can fall and crush you and your oxen slip and slide but the promised land is awaiting there on the other side oh the road is long and rocky full of pain and misery but a man with a dream can find the way. Follow him and you will be free. Oh, 
a man with a dream can find the way. Follow him and you will be free. To keep those wagons moving, keep them moving on. Though your men are all complaining, and your oxen, they are worn. There is no time to look around, no time to stop and rest. You've got to keep those wagons moving, keep them moving well. Oh, you know they're tired and weary, but you just can't stop and let them be. And a man with a dream can find a way. Follow him and you will be free. You will be free. It's a land of milk and honey. If you work for it, you will see. And a man with a dream can find a way. Follow him and you will be free. Don't get here pretty soon. It's all gonna be for nothing. I know. How's the food holding out, Martha? Oh, we still have enough for a few more days, but I sure be relieved to see those wagons come rolling in. Could be Doyle's man was held up coming over the gap. Yeah, he'd have sent word. I've been looking at the sky lately, Daniel, watching them snow clouds forming over the mountain. A couple more weeks, we can't get out and they can't get in. It looks bad. Well, there's only one thing to do, and that's go to Clint Station and see what went wrong. Don't be forgetting Becky.
If it wasn't your fight, why did you help me? Well, I didn't figure a dead man could teach a friend how to use that whip. You don't talk like any Indian I ever met before. Well, my mother is of the Cherokee, but my father was born near Oxford, and that's where I was educated. My name's Daniel Boone. My friends call me Mingo. Mingo? White men don't often come into Kentucky. May I ask what you're doing here? I brought some people in to start a settlement. The Shawnee and the Cherokee have always fought bitterly over the game on these hunting grounds. Well, I'm on my way to Clinch Station to get some supplies for the winter. There's a quicker route than the one you're traveling. I'd be happy to lead you there. You know the place? And Cash Doyle. If you've been dealing with him, it's going to be a cruel winter for your settlement. Well, I like to look on the bright side of things. The Cherokee have a saying. When the stomach is empty, you may as well feed on sorrow. Well, there's another old saying. You can't get water out of a well without dipping in a bucket. Center of culture. <laughs> Gotta pick up a passenger. It's a woman. Well, I don't get to pick up the sack of flour. Mr. Boone. I see you've mended. Martha was worried about you. Oh, how is she in Cincinnati? Bearing up. Dan! Well, I never figured you'd nest up in Clint Station. <laughs> I had something to take care of. Oh, uh, Mingo, I'd like for you to meet some friends of mine. This is Miss Brian, Jim Santee. Glad to know you, Chief. We have quite a thriving community here, Mr. Santee. You must have done fine in Kentucky. I see you've converted the natives. Oh, tell me all about the settlement. Well, we've got the stockade up, cleared some land, done some planting. Oh, sounds beautiful. We've been worried about you, Dan, haven't we, Becky? Things are a little different here. Is that what you're thinking, Mr. Boone? Different? I mean, the settlement, Clint Station. Well, I reckon some would prefer town living. And you're supposing I'd be one of them? As soon as Becky's free, we plan on getting married. Married. Surprise you? Well, I never figured on seeing you settle down. Settling? Settling down? Who says we're going to? We won't be here long, Dan. In a few weeks, Becky will have enough to pay for a bond working for the dock. She wouldn't be here now, except that she wouldn't let me pay it for her. It's my debt, and I'll not have anyone pay for it. You won't be coming to Boonesboro, then. Can you imagine me plowing and Becky a farmer's wife? Have her looking like Martha before her time? I reckon she's not cut out for it. You've had a hard trip, Dan. Why don't you come over to the tavern, have a drink? Maybe try your luck at the tables. It could change. Thanks, Jim. All we'll be wanting here are our supplies. And you're here to collect them? And to find out why they weren't delivered on time, as Doyle promised. There's been a change in this town, Dan. There's a panic. Food's scarce. Well, it's scarcer in Kentucky. And I've got a lot of hungry settlers depending on me. Dan, you're not going to get those supplies. And those supplies belong to us. We paid for them. Maybe I can show you better than I can tell you. I'll see you later, honey. Come on. The town's changed since last summer, Dan. It's this war talk. Loyalists built a stockade at a place called 96 on the Saluda River. They've been coming through here by the hundreds, loaded with money. Doyle selling them everything from grain to powder.
checking some supplies for Doyle. They're with me. Go ahead, Mr. Santee. Oh, uh, by the way, where are those supplies heading? They're marked for number 96 on the Saluda River. Go not tonight. There they are. How much you pay for that flower, Dan? Plenty. Well, whatever it was, today it's worth ten times as much. It's still our flower. It was your flower, Dan. Right now it belongs to the highest bidder. Bargain is a bargain. To Doyle? <laughs> He's got this town wrapped up. Including you? Doyle's a hard dealer, Dan. Harder than a pack of trappers with a bullwhip? You're asking for trouble, Dan. You got that wrong, Jim. Doyle is. Dan. Just remember, if you're gonna butt heads with Doyle, don't count on me. I won't. Come on. Someone to see you, Cash. Hello, Bo. How are things up with the settlement? Fine, except we're running short of food. That shipment you promised. Yeah, I'm having trouble getting supplies at Fort Chisel. But as soon as they arrive, I'll send them right up to you. Well, now, how soon will that be? Oh, two, three weeks. Well, that's not soon enough. I ain't got time to argue. If you don't like the deal, I'll give you your money back. It says you've got our money and that our supplies are stacked outside. That's our food, and you can start freighting it over the gap tomorrow. Telling me what to do. That food is worth 50 times what you paid for it. I'll take that receipt. This is my place of business, Boone, and I want you out of here. You made me a deal. I'm holding you to it. The only deal I'll honor is freighting your body over the gap. Take him, Santee. I said, take him, Santee. I, uh, I just quit cash. You're a worse gambler than I thought. at the loading area. Jim, what's happening? Come with me. No time for explanations. wagons for us. They're my supplies anyway. We're working for Doyle. He paying you that much? There's double that when we get to Kentucky. You got a deal. Let's finish loading. Those first two are loaded. And move out. Gunpowder. I know it. You contract for that? 
No, but it'll come in handy. and the hills have taken the wagons. Come on. Get some more men and meet me at the horses. Come on. get moving. You're pushing us, mister. That's what you're getting paid for. Maybe it ain't enough. You made a bargain, mister. Now there's a stand of trees up there, circle the wagons and wait. And fight? I figure with a Cherokee on our side, we got them outnumbered. Well, it's said among my people that one Cherokee is worth 10 white men. Of course, that's only a legend. Move them out. Ah! All right, move on, let's go.
Captain, let's get those wagons in a circle. Let's go. Move. Yeah. 